So Paul, thank you again. It's a, it's a real honor. I think the first thing I'd ask you, which is the most basic question is empathy is now this mental health buzzword, but I don't always know what it is. What is empathy? Are there different forms of empathy? Can you sort of unpack this, yeah. this, this concept for us a bit? First, thanks for the wonderful introduction. It was very kind. Um, I'm delighted to be talking to you. I'm delighted to have been invited to talk to this group and looking forward to actually having a chance to sort of go back and forth and bounce around ideas with people in this room. It could be that writing a book with the title Against Empathy was the biggest mistake of my professional life. Mm -hmm. it, it got me a lot of really weird email and a lot of people thinking like, hey, what kind of monster are you? And part of the issue is empathy does have different meanings. So some people view empathy as basically a code word for everything good, being a mensch, being good, being kind, love, you know, peace, everything good. I'm not against that. I'm in favor of good things. There's another meaning of empathy, which is more narrow, which is sometimes called cognitive empathy. And that's the ability to get into somebody's head, to figure out what's going on with them. And it's very important for a good manager, a good therapist, a good friend, a good parent to know what's going on in other people. And um, that, that sense of empathy is very interesting. I hope we get a chance to discuss it. I don't view it as either good or bad. So I think that sense of empathy, if I really care about you and, and love you and want to make your life better and you come to me, I, it really helps me to know what you're thinking, what's bothering you, what's really going on. It could be different from what you say. It's really a valuable thing. On the other hand, if I want to destroy your life, humiliate you, seduce you, con you, make you miserable, it also helps me to know what, what, what makes you tick, know what buttons to press. And, and some of the worst people in the world are really good at knowing how other people work. The sense of empathy I'm most interested in, I think it's mo most people focus, mean what they um, use the word, is what psychologists sometimes call emotional empathy, which is to feel what another person is feeling. So if you're in pain, if you're suffering, and I feel your pain, I, it makes, it brings me down. I feel it. I feel, I know what your experience, not only at an intellectual level, but at a gut level, I'm feeling empathy for you. And my book against empathy was an argument that that kind of empathy might be good for other reasons, might be part of intimacy, might, might have all sorts of goals, is actually a pretty lousy way to, uh, to, to work from a standpoint of helping people and being moral. And I argue that it's biased. I'm much more likely to feel empathy for you, um, you know, a, a, a white male professor at the same institution, you're so much like me than I am towards somebody whose skin is a different color, who's of a different sex or gender, who's in a faraway land. There's, there's a million laboratory studies we could talk about, but also just common sense. It's a lot easier for me to feel your pain than feel a stranger's pain. And if I rely on empathy, I'm gonna value more uh, you than, than a stranger. There's also the fact that often empathy conflicts with other things we wanna do, like care and, and long-term helping people. And finally, there's, there's empathy is connected to burnout in all sorts of ways. So I don't fully regret calling my book against empathy, but but I do want, I, I'm glad you let me make it more clear what kind of empathy I'm arguing against.